Hi, welcome to the multiplayer video series. In this series, we'll build a co-op multiplayer game inspired by the We Were Here games. We'll have switches, doors, weird symbols, and the player will need to communicate with each other in order to solve puzzles. In the first video, we'll take a look at how to get started with using Unity game services in your games. For that, we'll integrate the SDK into our project and implement player authentication. We're going to start by creating an empty project. So for this uh, particular project, you can choose actually any of the template. It doesn't really matter, but for the project that I have for this video, uh, I'm going to go with a 3D URP. Uh, name your project. We're going to go with a multiplayer game tutorial on my side. So that's going to be here. And I'm going to create the project. So next, you're going to want to add the SDK to your project. So you're going to go Window, Package Manager. Uh, for this one, we're going to go in Unity Registry, and we're just going to add the authentication package because we're not going to deal yet with Lobby and Relay. So uh, authentication, you can install it. Um, it's going to ask a couple of things from you since it's the first package of the SDK you're adding. Um, it's going to want to link to a Unity Games uh, Services project. So uh, we can all do this from inside the project or you could go on the website and do it on the website. But uh, since it can be done in the project, we're just going to do it here. So let's wait for the code to compile and there's going to be a window that pops up. Shouldn't be too long. Here we go. So link your Unity project. So they say you can go to the dashboard. That's true, but we can also just go to project settings. In project settings here, you, you'll have your thing. I can do a new link. You'll have this page. You can select your organization here and do create project ID. If you did create a project from the web website, you could have an existing project ID here. But we're going to create it. So here we go. So it creates it. We can answer this simple question. We're not targeting anyone under the, the age of 13. The, the organization is yours. This is your project ID. And then you can save. So now you have a um, project on the Unity Game Services website, and that will allow us when we uh, authenticate to link the data we create uh, to our organization. So uh, we're going to start with creating the UI. Um, so for this UI, let's rename the, sim the simple scene here to main menu. Um, the only important thing we have to do here is having an host and join button. Other than that, you're really like, feel free to create whatever you want. Um, I'm going to make a main menu. Uh, no, not a main menu, a menu controller here. Uh, that's going to be the parent of my canvas. So let's go to create a canvas here. Here we go. And then it, as I said, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to put a background image. So let's put yourself into these so that we can see going to choose a uh, purplish color, something like this, like a little bit more light, I think. Here we go. I'm going to scale it so that it fills the whole screen. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to put there uh, another game object here for the actual menu title. I'm going to take that opportunity to import Text Mesh Pro. There we go. Okay, so uh, the title I want it to be kind of uh, up top. Um, uh, you need to be stretched. So I'm really just doing some little. Uh, just some little tweaking so that we have something that is uh, kind of okay. Uh, and also this need to be minus 50. Oops. Minus 50. Uh, we're going to do a font that is about 100. And we're going to center it. Uh, place it around this. This is a little big. Okay. Now you need mold. T player 
a game. So that's going to be our title. Uh, then on the menu, we're going to want to put some buttons. So let's go with the first one. Button Text Mesh Pro. Uh, so that's going to be the host button. And we can already duplicate it because there's going to be a join button. Oh, join. Oh, boy. Join. Cool. So uh, we can take some time and kind of stylize the button. Okay, like this. And let's say 75. Yeah, I like that. Let's put them a little bluish for me. Um, a little bit lighter. Yeah, I like that. And uh, uh, the host button will put him up a little bit. Just a little bit. I think this guy is going to go down a little bit. But you know what? I'm going to stylize it and then duplicate it. So the text inside, I'm going to make it bigger. So around this, I'm going to make it say host. And then we're going to change the color. So I want a yellowish. Uh, how does it look? Uh, it's a little bit pale. Let's make it a little bit more bright. Okay. That's fine with me. I'm not a designer, so uh, you'll have to excuse me if you find this super ugly. Um, but uh, I'm going to put it in bold. I feel like it. Uh, it's better this way. So let's go. So we have our host button. We're going to duplicate it again. Rename it to join. So we're going to make it just here. So here, put it to join and we should be fine. Okay, so this is going to be our uh, simple UI for the uh, the main menu. So the main menu has two options. We're going to add more screen um, as we advance in the video to get kind of uh, more information. But for now, it's going to be fine. We just want to be able to see that Whenever our initialization is done, our authentication is done, we transit, we transition to this game, uh, this one. So I'm just going to copy the uh, menu because, um, not the menu, but the background. I just want the background, I think. Uh, yeah. So let's rename this background. And we're going to create an another scene, which is going to be the initialization scene. So you can uh, just call it init. So let's go here, create the scene. Let's call it init. And we're going to go there. We're sa saving this scene. Okay. <coughs> so what we're going to do, uh, you know what? No, we're going to do a third scene uh, right, about, right about now, a looting scene that we can add to any screen when we want to just pop a loading screen, you know? So uh, let's go UI canvas because we don't know. We don't need much for this one. We literally just need this and uh, I'm going to put my background on that canvas, remove this one and put some text that says loading. I mean, that's kind of it. That's all we need. So UI text mesh pro uh, loading text. But the interesting thing here is we could have at some point like a fetch from a server, some tips or some uh, stuff that we want to write on the screen. But for now, like we're, this is not about the, uh, fetching stuff from servers. So we're just going to put loading with three dot. I always add three dot. I like it. So we're going to do this. This is going to be like a full screen thing because this is the only thing right now on the screen. So let's go like here and we're going to do this, 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 uh, as I said, like this and like this loading. Okay. So let's make it bigger though. Loading like this. I like it. And make the canvas sort order um, uh, something like uh, ridiculous, like nine, 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 nine. Uh, so that way, whenever you add this scene to your uh, to any scene, if you in an additive mode, it, this is always going to be on top. So that's what we want. Okay, cool. So let's go here. So here we can already add it because anyway, like the the we're going to start with the loading scene. The init scene doesn't have anything. It just loads, loads stuff. And um, it's going to communicate with the game services to kind of authenticate you and stuff. So um, let's go with an init game object. We're going to create the script folder and we're going to start scripting. So script folder. 
and we can do an init script here we go so we have the basic setup for our scene now uh, the only thing we need to do is in the init script we need to initialize the game services SDK and then we need to authenticate with the game services once that is done we transition from the init scene to the main menu scene and it's going to be it for this video so uh, let's go let's start with this so let's go into writer so uh, here we're going to try in our start menu to um, initialize the SDK so the SDK used a lot of synchronous functions so um, to kind of um, await for them we need to make our uh, start method a sync so this is supported by unity no problem so we're gonna go await unity services ooh, unity services woo, services dot initialize async so we could we could do an initial thing and then add something to uh, to wait. But what, what we want to wait for it because we want it to be initialized before anything else execute. So we're gonna go here. If Unity services that state equals initialized, that means everything went fine. I'll let you handle if it doesn't go fine. We can log something. Uh, but for now we're gonna concentrate on the golden path so everything is uh, working and it is supposed to work so let's go now we need to authenticate though so authentication manager uh, no, not manager service dot instance and you sign in an anonymously so there's multiple type of, of authentication mostly with unity you can uh, authenticate with um, with some third party like uh, uh, Apple, Facebook, Google, Steam, Google Play, and OpenID Connect. And I'm pretty sure at some point there's gonna be like other ways to authenticate, but for us, the anonymous one is gonna be uh, the way to go. So there's problem with this one because um, it's tied to your machine. So um, if you uninstall the game, reinstall, or change something in your computer, then you lose your progress in the game. So for now, this is usually, <coughs> sorry, a temporary thing. And you make the user after that uh, create an account. So this is usually to like have less friction for the player to kind of try your game. But at some point you might want to provide him with another way of, um, of signing in or linking his data to a more persistent uh, way of authentication. So any of those would work. Even the personal account that you would create in your system with a with a username and password or stuff like that. But I feel like at some point your game might be on Steam and then you're going to use the Steam async and then it every and, and all of this is going to be fine. Okay, so let's go for now. We sign in anonymously. For us, it it's fine. So we await. We sign in at the, uh, we we uh, ask the game services to sign us in, and we need to kind of use the same pattern. You know, every service kind of um, has its state. So uh, you can ask after the authentication is done, am I signed in? If so, th this person is uh, anonymous right now. But at some point, if you want a later provider with a way to um, set our username or set some information you can save it in the um, in the player pref so uh, right now what we're going to do is um, uh, we're going to declare a string username that's going to be uh, by default um, yeah it's going to be wh wh whatever it is in the player pref okay so we're going to go player prefs point get string and we're going to do username here um, oops sorry about that if username is not uh is equal to null so, uh, or empty string in this case because it's a string then we do a username equals uh something generic like player and then we set it player pref dot um set string sorry about that 
username and then we'll put username and at some point we're gonna redo this line but with something that the player ha has entered so yeah that's it so now we want a scene manager that load async and we're gonna pass a main menu so right now we have initialized the SDK we are logged in so the we can communicate with any of the services so uh, our initialization process is kind of done we can just transition to the main menu so let's test this uh, with this one and then we're gonna go to unity perfect so it's gonna reload the scripts we're gonna make sure to add the init script here on the init object so init Well, that should be uh, perfect. So we're going to play it. Here we go. So uh, basically, the init script loaded. Um, we, we got logged in. And right now, we're not seeing anything. But I'm going to show you in a second how you can like um, add information. But technically, we are logged in. So um, we can go back to writer and uh, I'll show you. I'll show you guys how to add uh, some uh, um, some ways to kind of tell that uh, everything is, everything worked fine. But we are signed in and we are uh, initialized. But the authentication service uh, kind of give you ways to um, get notified of things. I don't encourage you to put it here, and uh, later we'll we'll see some ways to. Um, to put it at the right place but you see here we have expired sign in sign out sign in fail so this is all like actions you can um, subscribe to so let's say signed in i'm doing plus equals it's going to ask me to create um, uh, something a, a function for it so there you go on signed in and then i can say that i'm signed in so i can do debug the log signed in token because uh, you can access also the token so let's do this uh, like this this is not something you would actually have in production because you don't want it <laughs> to be in production but uh for now for our for our sake instance that uh access token or we could do also uh Go. we can we can just let's just put some information in here so sign in and then let's say player id because this is going to be useful at some point when you, when we want to find this person's information on um, on the website so let's go so player id token okay so perfect so at least right now we know when we sign in so let's go back to unity Okay, <coughs> I remove a couple of uh, A I've added on the uh, by accident in the code, and here we go. So we're gonna we we're supposed to see here the logs uh, appearing, and it did not. It did not do it. Um. So unsigned in. Oh yeah, because okay yeah here's the error. Uh, we <laughs> we subscribe to the event after signing in, so yeah, for sure this is not gonna work. So let me just fix that right here. Okay, so now it should work. So I'm gonna stop the project here, and we're gonna play again. And there we go. This time we have the player ID and we have the token. This is all for our current video. In the next one, we're going to take a look at how to create lobby and join someone else's lobby. If you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.